Mercury's in Gatorade. I can't help anything. to my channel. I am your human host, Gabby. You can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gales and on my hand-dyed yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and PliesandHellhounds.com. Welcome back to our crafty puppy interrupted channel. And this week I have uh, kind of like a OG style uh, finished objects, whips, what I'm reading, what we're up to video. Uh, because I've been knitting a lot. I've been crafting a lot. I've also been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I have gotten a lot done on my island and I'm very excited for it. Do I have anything to show you about? Absolutely not. No, not on that. We don't have, uh, intros are hard this week apparently. My bangs are doing things, I have to cut them and I uh, refuse to acknowledge that bit. Bye. So yeah, I've got some coffee and um, let's get into it. Yes, before we get into what I have been working on, I just want to let you all know that the Knit Nelly Cal is still going on. And Saturday, May 28th at noon Eastern time, we are going to be pulling another prize drawing. I'm hoping this video goes up around 9 a.m. on Saturday per usual. See if anything crazy happens. Hopefully it doesn't. And this cal we are knitting from... Knit Nelly, Shop Knit Nelly, oh my goodness, Morgan's Patterns. I will leave all the rules and regulations down in the doobly-doo. That's what I'm missing. I'm missing that sock. Oh, I lost that sock again. Yeah. And we have a wonderful prize bundle this week and next week. Uh, I think I'm doing the prize bundle. I have it all pulled. I just have to double check on my dates. But yes, I'm very excited and I'm really enjoying knitting these patterns. They've been on my list for a long time and this is uh, going on until July 2nd. So you have plenty of time to enter all, again, everything will be down below. Let's uh, get into it because I apparently can't talk today. Sentences are beyond me. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know. Let's just begin with what I am wearing. I am wearing my finished Salty Air Tea by Samantha Garen Designs. This was a test knit that I did for her and it is in my Ponkin colorway. I did this on my Selkie base, which is a non-superwash merino silk blend in a fingering weight and I adore it. I'm gonna be... Thanks, Iron. Hopefully putting in some footage of a act like full length instead of the awkward showing that I usually try to do. I love this style tee. Her Pine Creek, which is what Barnaby is wearing underneath all these shawls, and this tee are just, they're such good knits. Uh, they're super easy. They're super wearable. I wear these things to death. Iron is just rolling around the living room. I really hope you can hear that. I really do. <laughs> rolling around the living room. I really hope you can hear that. I really do. <laughs> So yeah, I um, have so many plans for more of this, more of the Pine Creek. I still really want to make one of these with uh, held together with mohair and just have like a delicious fuzzy little t-shirt. I'm here for it. I really want one in black. I really want one at night. I really just want a thousand of these. I just, yeah, once you get past the lace, it's so fast. It's uh, so good. So good. So this is finished object number one. Number two, I don't have on me. I don't know where they are, but I did finish the Pisces Socks by Laura Beth Knits in the Thor Ragnarok colorway that Jake dyed on my Isaac base. And I gave them to him for his birthday. I finished May 17th at like 10.30 at night. <laughs> I blocked them overnight so he could wear them for on his birthday, but I will hopefully I took a picture of them. I just went to go look for them. I think he doesn't usually wear hand knit socks to work, so they might be in his like bocce bag because I think I think he might have worn them to bocce this week. I, yeah, I couldn't. They weren't in his usual sock pile. So hopefully I have a photo here of these. I started these in April of 2020 <laughs> and I finished them. I wanted to knit them for his birthday and I did just two years later. Killing it, really killing it. 
I actually needed show notes this week instead of just rambling into the nothings. I do have one other project that I have finished and I have to grab it. I have to find my socks still. Oh no. Hold on. Let me find my socks while I'm up. I have finished my uh, shawl revamp. I'm revamping my Mischief Manage shawl. We're getting a rename. We're re-knitting it. We're updating the pattern a little bit. And so I have done a version in DK weight. And I'm obsessed. So I'm redoing it in my Till Death collection. So this is Earl Grey. And this is on my Pole DK base, which is 100% Superwash Poleworth. And oh this shawl on a DK. I do have a finished one in Ravishing and this is, sorry, where to be? Selkie and my fig lace held together and my dear friend Bailey knit this one for me and I love it and Barnaby wears it perfectly and it matches her skirt and uh, chef's kiss. Oh no. I got this um, Rare Beauty Lip Mousse, I think is what it's called. I really like the color but it, um, only transfers everywhere. It's super, it's like a matte, so it's like super creamy. I feel weird saying that, but it doesn't stay on. Um, it, it only, it trans, I, it's like five mugs now, because I've been wearing it a lot this week since I just got it, and I really like it. I like the application. I like how it goes on. I love the colors. It just does not stay on. I haven't tried the like setting powder trick with it yet because I got a new setting powder also from Rare Beauty and I'm not 100% sure how to get to the powder yet. So <laughs> just, yeah, I'm working on it. But I really like this color. I think this one is Strengthen. And then I have a brighter red, which is Transform. I will leave links. But yeah, I've just been terrified of getting lipstick on anything I touch because I like touch my face a lot without realizing it and then I have red hands. It just looks like I'm bleeding all the time. So um, there is going to be a third version in Hearth that is going to be arriving sometime this summer. Uh, I don't have a release date on this. I wanted to do it. Well, I didn't want to do it for our wedding anniversary because I didn't um, finalize this until like March 7th. So at some point this year, cause I want to rephotograph them. I want to zhuzh up the pattern a little bit, but it's happening soon. And yes, I love this. I used a little less than three skeins of a DK weight, which was, I thought I was going to have to use four, but I did not. And oh, it's lovely. I will also be putting some footage in here. Ooh, sorry, Sylvia. Of... Uh, like full length versions of this. It's really nice. I really like it. Uh, this shawl I originally designed for my friend Abigail, the Abigail to my Gabigails, when she got married in 2018. And I dyed her uh, colorway using all of her wedding colors. And I did give her the original shawl. So um, I just figured after a couple years it was time for a revamp. Yeah, if it gets too hot, I will take this off. So that is my final finished object. I love the shawl still. I don't know what I was thinking designing shawls, but here we are. I really enjoy it. Yes, I'm super excited for this and uh, I'm excited to sit down and like really get going on it. I just have to like, I have grand plans for the photo shoot for it, but I have to remember that it's me and like one friend usually for photos, so. Rain, rain it in. Yeah, do I want to drag out my wedding dress and go to Gillette's Castle and take very epic photos? Absolutely. Is it also a very popular time of year for people to go there? Yeah, I don't really want to do that in a wedding dress. What I have been working on, I'm going to try and do this in like chronological order. No, I'm not. I'm just going to go. The closest thing to being done is my Striacardian by Andrea Mowry. I am knitting this out of my spring collection on my penny base and I have a finished a body. Here she is. I 
am so excited for this. Let me hold on. This is so transferable. If I do like the tuck your like thing, uh, I'm just gonna get lipstick all over my face. So, so I have finished the body for this. I think I'm knitting the second or third size. I think I'm doing like 36 inch bust on this. I wanted some good positive ease because cardigan and it's an open one. I do want to put buttons on it, but here we are. I have it so it unblocked, it's sitting like mid hip. So it should go a little bit further once I have blocked it. I am dreading this part a lot, a lot. I haven't picked this up in a minute and I think it's because I'm realizing I have to block to weave in all these ends and I hate weaving in ends. So I'm avoiding doing the sleeves because I don't want to carry four colors up the sleeves, but I don't want to weave in 10 billion ends. But I would like this for SSK. I mean, I would like this for like a summer cardigan. I think it'd be very nice. So yeah, I have picked up for one of the sleeves and I caked up the last skein of yarn that I have for this. And I just have to start it. I just have to work on it. I know the sleeves are going to go by really fast. I don't think I'm going to do long sleeves. I think I'm going to do like three quarter ish because I'm going to roll my sleeves up. That's what I do with cardigans. That's what I do with almost all my sweaters. But cardigans, I, I like having the three quarter sleeve anyway, because then I don't need to roll them up. They're already at the rolled up length so I can do things. Oh, welcome back, bud. Yes, I'm knitting, I think the second size, and I am doing this on US 2.5 millimeter needles, the uh, Meditate, Ooh. I'm forgetting the name, I will put it down here. The swivel, is it the swivel ones? Yes, I have these ones on the swivel cable one, which I need more of them, I need more swivel cables. They are Knitter's Pride, because they are interchangeable with my Knitter's Pride inner tangles. I will work on her. I will finish her for SSK. I will do it. I just um, have gotten a little distracted with a couple other things. One being my uh, Knit Nelly Cal socks. These are the Calico socks. And I love them. I needed, I didn't know I needed, but I knew I needed a floral on black socks. So that's what I did. Uh, the base is Nightmares Plus 10 on my Selkie base, and I'm just using my Opia scraps from the Stria cardigan and Anna Karam on Iron scraps from my After Some Shawl that I did with Sam for the Dark Academic Yarn Countdown last year. So I have cast on both socks. These have been my movie socks uh, when we went to go see Doctor Strange and then I thought I lost them. So I had to cast on new socks for Downton Abbey, but then I found them again because they're behind my laptop. Here we are. I'm going to do afterthought heels because I didn't want them to be super long. They're kind of spring socks. So uh, I have a marker here and I'm going to do the shortbread heel by Larkspur Knits. I did a heel test thing. I had put them in self-striping socks before and I really like the way they fit. So I'm going to do that again. I haven't decided if I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do Opia because you don't need a ton for the Stria cardigan. So I'm going to have enough left over to do heels in both the socks. And then there's a little detail on the toe. I think I'm going to do the toe and the Anna Karam just to use up the rest of those scraps. I am using uh, my Haya Haya's one sharp, one regular because I'm losing all my needles and I need to reorganize my life again or maybe finish some socks. I'm sure they're on socks somewhere. Uh, US ones, I think. Now that I'm looking at them, they might be two different size needles. They might, one might be a one, one might be a one and a half. But we're gonna ignore that and never talk about it again, ever. They're gonna be fine. I'm at the point where I wanna put the heel in, that way I know where to stop for the color work on the toe. I just need to sit down and do that. And I'm hoping to take these to SSK because I think these would be super fun for people to use up the scraps if they get like sweater quantities for a color work sweater or a cardigan. And they're like, I don't know what to do with all this extra yarn. You just, you make socks. You make color work socks. Also because they're super cute and they're very on brand. Floral on black, can't, can't lose. 
So that is also uh, low-key what I've been working on. Socks are easy, and yes, I don't know if we have any other movies that we're going to anytime soon. Thor comes out eventually, but there's no other movies that are really like, ah, I need to go see them. I did a cast on a new sweater, t-shirt, top. I've had a little bit of like cast on itis uh, recently. I've been, I feel like all this week I've just been caking yarn. That's it. That's all I've been doing. One of the things I cast on is the souffle top by Lauren Penrose. This top. I am knitting it out of my fig lace, mohair silk base in the Anna Karam colorway, which is from the, it's our winter collection slash the dark academic yarn countdown. And you guys, this is the most romantic top I've ever knit. It is, I just want to be a Parisian hobbit. And I think this is going to help that. I definitely want a black version. So this one, there are two options. I'm hopefully putting up photos here of a short sleeve and a long sleeve. They both kind of have like a poof sleeve. So this is going to be my short sleeve version. Uh, I am hoping to have this done for SSK. I'm trying to revamp like all my samples. Uh, I have a I have some fabric in my Mood Fabrics cart that I really want to get before we leave for Nashville to make some skirts to go with it and just like be the romantic hobbit of my dreams. <sighs> I love it. I am, uh, I want to say about an inch and a half, maybe an inch away from, uh, it's got this beautiful ruffle across I think it goes across like the whole, like around your shoulders and everything. It is just little dainty details that are so good. I'm almost at the ruffle and I'm so excited. This has really just been kind of like my Sims knitting during loading screens and like in, I don't even like, I just pick it up. I just keep it on my desk. It doesn't even really go in a project bag. It's in one, but it just sits on my desk and I work on it while I'm waiting for like, on the phone or answering emails or watching YouTube videos or playing The Sims. And just, it's delightful. It is delightful. So yes, I'm going to make this one a short sleeve version. I want to make a black version with the long sleeves because I need just like Victorian ghost vibes as well as Parisian Hobbit vibes. Parisian Hobbit is my summer aesthetic. The end. The end. I'm trying really hard not to make like wool shorts. I'm kind of probably not, I kind of want to make wool shorts. I found the brown tartan leftovers from my Ro Blue I still haven't had the courage to see if it'll fit or sew it. I'm afraid if I sew it and it doesn't fit, I will never touch a sewing machine again. But I probably should have thought of that before I cut it out three years ago. <laughs> and never put it together. But I found the leftovers and I found this pleated short high-waisted short pattern. And finding high-waisted shorts is very hard for me because I have a very long hip and I want them to be my, my waist. So I found this pattern and I found, and this is a ramble, but I just, this summer is Parisian Hobbit. I'm not here to fight things. I'm just here to live a Macron garden life. And that's it. That's it. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this. This is also, as I said, going to be a sample for SSK. If I can handle the heat, I'm hoping I can wear this outfit. If not, I will probably just be where I will be wearing this. The older I get, the more I realize I don't do well in heat. I have a button order that I also need to place very soon with buttons for the Stria Cardigan. And I think I just want like a really nice, like there's these Crescent Moon Star buttons that I think I'm gonna get for the Stria cardigan, but I think I'm also gonna get like one extra to do this or like a bit, just like a super dainty like pearl button. You know, I have been talking for like 15 minutes about absolutely nothing. <sighs> yes, I am knitting it on a US size six. <laughs> I am right now holding the mohair single, but I will be holding a double. So like this part's a little bit more sheer. I have no idea what I'm gonna wear underneath it. I've already had a talk with myself that I need to figure out more new bra things. Maybe, I don't, I don't know if I wanna like knit a ripple bralette to go underneath it. I feel like the straps would be really thick and take away from like that light airy. Like I don't want anything to take away from it. Maybe just like a strapless bra. I don't know. 
haven't figured that out yet. I usually don't. I usually just wear whatever I'm wearing and go with it. So that's probably what's gonna happen. I have to look at the project pages and see what other people do. I have one other sample that I do want to make for SSK. I am hoping to have this cast on this weekend. I told myself I have to get through the ruffle of the souffle and then I can cast on the bloom pullover, bloom top, bloom sweater. I will have a photo here. Um, I'm not going to show you the color yet because I'm super excited and I, I just want to like see it knit up before I'm like, this is it. So yeah, I, I'm hoping to have that done. That way I have just a plethora of short sleeve knit things. I have a lot of long sleeve and errand weight and heavy sweaters like that I've knit that are coming down the road, but I know that those are not like warm weather knits. So I'm trying to expand my sample. So I'm not like, here's an errand weight sweater, Nashville, Tennessee in July. Have fun. I'm also, I just need to update my samples. A lot of them are colors I don't dye anymore. Some are on bases I don't dye anymore. I need to update. Yeah, I just, we gotta do some updating. I have one other cast on uh, of things that I'm actively working on and that is a baby sweater for my dear friend who is having a baby. So I have started a flax light. This is as far as I got. Uh, which is Tin Can Knits fingering weight version of um, like a vanilla sweater with this garter detail on the sleeves. All the links are in the doobly-doo and I'm doing this out of Knit Picks Felici because I thought it was super cute and I might, I don't know, I might, I might have to get some of those for myself. Um, this is the Bookshop colorway by Felici in the fingering weight and I, the collar and the ribbing is all going to be in their palette in the Grizzly Heather. Um, I did get two 100 grams of this total and I'm doing the 6 to 12 month size. Uh, the baby is due in August. And I'm trying, the plan is to have like a coordinating set for baby, their um, two year old, and then them. I'm making them hats that like, I'm making the parents hats. I'm making their two year old uh, the playdate cardigan and I'm going to make new baby a pullover because I only bought two balls of each and I figured with the cardigan, I'll have a little bit more play. Like I could do a longer ribbing and it wouldn't look weird on a pullover if I run out of the Felici. I got the log cabin. I got Felici for them too. Yeah, yeah. I will be showing you these things. Um, I'm not in a rush to do this. Again, baby's not due till August. I'm basically just getting these all set because I think these are going to be my car slash Nashville knitting. Um, I'll probably have something in my own yarn to knit at SSK if I have a chance to sit down and knit or like during lunch and stuff. But um, like the drive and just walking around and going out, I want something small, I want something vanilla, I want something light. So I figure this would be super easy. They're basically vanilla cardigans and sweaters and they're baby sweaters, so they're very fast. So chances are I might fix them, fix them finish them between it's a 16 hour drive to Nashville. I think it's like a four hour drive to Memphis. And then we don't know what the plan is after that. If we're going to stop somewhere or try and just drive straight from Memphis back home, or if we're going to spend overnight visiting friends up the East coast, we haven't decided yet. We've got mm, some time. Other work in progress that I completely forgot about for a second. And that is I spun a braid of fiber last night by accident, I meant to spin uh, <laughs> things. Okay, so I got this Into the World Wensleydale the last year at Rhinebeck. It is in the Mud Bogs and Moonshine colorway. And oh, it is everything that my Swampage Heart wants. So I usually, to prep my fiber, I will split, split the braid in half lengthwise and then break it up even further. So it's basically pencil roving because I'm lazy. Um, unless I'm doing a three ply, then I will like split the braid. I want to say bread wise, but I don't think, not, not the proper term, I don't think, but it is now. 
in my head. So yeah, I meant to spin half of this last night. The plan is to do a two ply with it. So I was going to spin one half onto one bobbin, one half onto the other bobbin, ply them onto the third bobbin, done. Um, and I did this on my Plyology e-wheel. Uh, I will leave a link to their website below. I did a beta test on the wheel for them in 2020 and I loved it, so I got it. And um, yeah, it. the e-wheels are so dangerous because you literally can just sit on the couch. Like I was practically laying down and spinning because you can't, like you can have the pedal or you can just unplug the pedal and it just turn it on and it goes. Um, so yeah, I accidentally spun four ounces of fiber last night. Wensleydale is delicious. It is rustic, but smooth. I think it, it would be, I'm going to be getting some more um, to help teach people to spin because yeah yeah it's uh I'm going to be getting more of this I think it's the first or second Wensleydale I've spun I really should keep track of this but yeah the plan is to still do a two ply uh, I'm just going to do the cake method from for this instead it's not my favorite but I just didn't want to get up and change the bobbin over or do anything so I will be probably caking this up tonight and uh, applying it I apply on my sorry I have copy verbs usually I apply on my honey and ply my wooden wheel but it's gonna go by so much faster on the e-wheel and I'm just ooh. I keep finding fiber like there's fiber under here there's fiber that's fiber that bucket down there is fiber right behind you is two bins of fiber Behind Barnaby is more. I just keep finding more and I really want to spin it. I got a spinning bug. I got spin. It's here. I am realizing that I think Tour de Fleece is during SSK, so I'm not even going to be home for most of it. And I don't really want to pack, even if it's an e-wheel. I don't really want to pack a wheel. Maybe my Nano, but I don't know where my bobbins are. So if I said on here where I put my bobbins for my e-wheel, please help. <laughs> I have no idea where they are. I can't find them anywhere. I've asked Adrian, I've asked my mom, I've asked friends. I have no idea where these bobbins are. I've gone through every single project bag, every bin. I've gone through my stash twice. No clue where these things are. I don't know where else to look. So yeah, this is it. I love this. I mean, I love Into the World. I, when I, they're the... <laughs> They're a company where I run out of their fiber, I automatically know the next time I see them, I'm getting at least two or three more bags because it's just so good. Their colors are amazing. They're just, the variety that they have is so good. And it just, I love it. They're my go-to. If I don't know what to spin, I'm gonna spin into the world. I can't wait to get more of this. I'm like, oh, this color is just so good. So good. So yes, that's everything that I've been working on crafting wise. I believe, um, yeah, I haven't really crocheted since I finished that blanket. I do want to pick up my moon blanket because June is right around the corner and I'm, I'm telling myself I don't need to finish this blanket at the end of the year, but if I can like, if I fall behind, at least crochet to the month that we're in at that way, like I have a goal and it, it's probably like one or two nights of crocheting. Like it's probably just a couple episodes of Survivor because that's what I base my life in now. Uh, for time. So I'm hoping to get that done in the next couple, that section done in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, just work on the samples and start. Yeah. So I guess this is going into what I've been reading and also what we've been up to. It's a lot of planning. We announced this week on Instagram that we are doing an advent calendar this year or yarn countdown, whatever you want to call them. It is Pandora's box themed. I have picked a couple pieces of art and I'm doing a ton of research into the lore and the translations and uh, like the artifacts telling the story of Pandora's box and pulling inspiration from the paintings and a lot of the like translations and research for the names. I'm super excited for it. So I have that all announced and I'm still working behind the scenes on it obviously but like I'm very excited for that and I'm blocking out some time in August to get all those dyed up and ready to go. We are planning, we just finalized our lineup for the SSK colors. 
we've got all the samples planned out. I just have to do all. I just have to do it all now. Um, I've dyed up the June Wicked Seeds color and I'm obsessed with it. And I don't know what to make with my skeins yet because I'm keeping one of each like I did with the moons. But oh, they're delicious. This month is so good. By this month, I mean June. Yeah, it's some. It's almost summer. The uh, flowers took a tumble. Um, I, I don't grow flowers very well. I'm not good at flowers. I can get them to where you sell them in a greenhouse and then that's usually where I kill them. Sometimes I can't even get there. So uh, gardening is, but <laughs> I have saved a ton of the seeds. I figure if these sprouts continue to die, I'm just gonna go outside and put things in the pots and just let them be wild and see what happens. That's probably what's gonna work best. Yeah, a lot of Animal Crossing. I have redone my town square. I've redone Lucky's yard and I made a pumpkin spice cafe and a little like mountain trail down to my museum, which is the library research center. And I'm gonna make the beach another research center, but that beach right now was holding all my flowers. Um, yeah, I got Pashmina to move in and I'm gonna make her a little forest witch. And now I'm just trying to kick out Pecan or Blanche because um, Pecan's been mean to Coco, so she's gotta go. And Blanche, I didn't, I got her because she's super popular. So I was like, oh, everyone really likes her. I should get her. I don't, she's just not. I have too many snooties. I have like three snooty villagers and Anka is the only snooty villager that I need. She's staying forever. Um, I kind of redid her yard, but I'm going to redo it again because I'm making her like a desert oasis filled with lily of the valley and black lilies and I think gold roses. I'm, I'm going to try and do that and just make her extravagant and delicious and royal because she deserves it. Lopez can do no wrong and he's perfect. Yeah, that's, it's just been a lot of Animal Crossing and a lot of Survivor. Oh, and I've been reading. <laughs> so books, last time I talked to you, I just finished Zodiac Academy book six. Since then, I have read Guild from the Plated Prisoner series book one by Raven Kennedy and it hooked me. It hooked. It's a very fast read and it ends on like a whiplash cliffhanger but also just like a complete 180 to like where you thought the book was going and it's got everything like it's like medieval fantasy there's magic there's mystery things going on it's a little bit of like secluded heroine finally starts to make friends and then trauma everywhere so much trauma there's past trauma there's current trauma there's about to be some future trauma it's just it's good so i read that and then i read wretched which is the newest ever uh the newest part of the never after series which is um fairy tale villain retellings by emily mcintyre and this is the wizard of oz retelling so you have Evelyn Westerly. I don't know. It's her older sister's name is Dorothy. And there's a, a murder mystery. It's like a drug cartel right outside Chicago. There's undercover, like FBI agent and very much the uh, I hate you. You're true evil. I would never my moral compass. I could not. But if I like don't have you, I'm going to die. It's good. It's good. It's dark, but it's good. It was so good. I think it's supposed to be like a Tin Man. Like the ending was so sweet. Like the ending was super cute for um, a romance novel where there's a lot of murder and like cold blood, cold, cold blood killing, cold blooded killing. So yeah, uh, I read that. And then I started Glint, which is book two in the Plated Prisoner series. I think about 45% through that and we have met there's more backstory we met commander rip which i think is just so good so sassy so good um delightful delightful i'm i'm really enjoying it it's there's a lot more um i think the author does a really good job of like intertwining her past and where she is now because it's a big travel montage it's basically the two towers they're just walking in the snow forever and we've just we've been in the snow for like a book and a half now 
but yeah, it's really good. I'm really enjoying it and I'm going to be doing, I've got a couple more like Kindle Unlimited bonkers romances <laughs> lined up and I have to read The Covert Captain for book club this month and I'm super excited for it. I know um, Heaving Bosoms covered it, but it's just a delightful little Regency romance. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I'm so excited to read that. So uh, I'm going to read a couple of those just to like palette cleanse in between long series books. And then after The Last Plate of Prisoners, I'm going to read the seventh Zodiac Academy. I'm saying all this and I'm probably not going to do anything be of it because reading, reading. Yeah, I'm still working on the alchemy book. I haven't really picked it up. I just haven't had the the brain space to do it. And yeah, that's what we have been up to. That is what we've been reading. Uh, we're on season 10 of Survivor. We're in Palau now. It We've gotten through two seasons of Boss and Rob. It is delightful. Hot dummies. They're all just hot dummies. My favorite person just got voted off and I'm super sad. And I just really hope that the guy who betrayed her with nerd trust goes next because I hate him and he's the worst. That is what uh, I've been working on. That is what I've been watching and reading and playing. I am hoping to, I don't know, do some like cozy gaming. I had a couple people reach out and say that they would be super into that and they think it was a really good idea. So I'm just trying to like figure out what I need and how to do it. I don't think I'm going to start a second channel for it because I am the lazy but I will like make a separate section on this channel for it. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a big thing. It's going to be a very chill, like one or two episodes every so often of it. And I've got my first couple games lined up and I'm super excited for them. I just need to like get it all set up. Yeah, it's going to be very low key, but I'm super excited. <sighs> With that, I will let you go. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the shop and supporting this channel. If you like this video and want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys soon because we put out videos almost every Saturday. Bye!